In this video, we're making dungeon tiles. What have I done? <laughs> In one of my recent videos, I made an entire dungeon out of pixel art, and it was really fun to make just a few, like four or five little tiles, and repeat those four or five little drawings over and over again to build a huge entire dungeon. So I thought, why not take that concept out of the computer and build a dungeon just like that in real life with, with my hands. <laughs> so maybe this video is just gonna show a proof of concept of how to make a dungeon, or maybe this is gonna be a really practical and fun way to build dungeons quickly and easily that you can throw down at the table. And even though it's not gonna look crazy detailed or super fancy, it's still gonna be a fun way to present a dungeon at the table. Okay, so we're gonna need a couple things to make these dungeon tiles. First up is some one inch grid paper. You can totally make this yourself, just drawing out a grid with a ruler. I've got this huge pad of blue line grid paper that I I just love. The size is probably a little bit overkill for this project, but it's what I'm gonna use. Also, here is the other wall of my studio. You're also gonna need some black foam core or illustration board. The stuff I'm using is like a quarter of an inch, like five millimeters thick. You're gonna need some glue to adhere the grid paper to the foam board. I'm gonna be using rubber cement. You can manage with glue stick, but it's not the best. Rubber cement doesn't smell the greatest, but it really is gonna be perfect for this job. You're also gonna need a really sharp hobby knife or X-Acto blade. You also probably want a cutting mat so you don't mess up a table that you're working on or you know some thick cardboard or something you can cut on top of. And last but not least, you're gonna need something to fill in some black areas. So a Sharpie would do the trick or craft paint. I'm gonna be using a Posca mark just a black paint pen. I'll have links to all this stuff down in the description so you can check out exactly what I'm using, but as we go through the process, you'll get an idea of how this is all gonna work and you, you'll be able to figure out your own tools too. Oh yeah, a ruler is really important. I only have a, a bad plastic one, so I'm not gonna be cutting against that. Really the best kind of ruler would be like a, a metal ruler with some cork underneath to keep it from sliding around, or, or better yet with this foam core, having a T-square would work really nicely. Throughout this video, I'm gonna be cutting stuff just by eyeballing it on the grid. I would recommend using a ruler. Your tiles are gonna be much more square and nice and fit together more perfectly if you use that ruler. All right, the first step is sticking this grid paper to the foam core. Like I said, I'm using rubber cement. This goopy stuff is meant for sticking two pieces of paper together and since this foam board is uh, literally a sheet of paper that's stuck to foam, it's gonna work perfectly. All you gotta do with this rubber cement is cover the whole foam board with it and then also cover the back of your sheet of grid paper. It doesn't make much sense, but you're gonna let both of them dry. They'll be a little bit tacky to the touch, but they'll, they'll basically be dry and then you stick them together. Be really, really careful when you stick them together because it it sticks. I guess spray adhesive would work really well too, but it's kind of messy and I, I really don't like spraying stuff and breathing it in. Okay, here's the cool thing about rubber cement. As you can see, I got some on my table and glue on a laminate table is not good, but with rubber cement, all you have to do is rub on it a little bit and it comes right off. So insert dirty joke here, but really this rubber cement is great because even if you're kind of messy with it and it gets on the paper, as long as it's not stuck to another sheet of paper with rubber cement, you can really just use your finger and rub the, the glue right off of the paper. Okay, next up we are cutting out a four by four inch panel. Now here's where I tell you to be very, very careful with these X-Acto knives. You're not gonna be trying to cut through a, a piece of paper glued to this thick foam board in one go. So what you're gonna do is very lightly score along the line that you're cutting, just, just press down ever so lightly. It's gonna be much easier to control the X-Acto blade so you don't slip and cut yourself, and it's gonna make this nice 
little groove that when you go back over it again with the X-Acto blade, it's gonna flow right through there and you're gonna be cutting the same spot over and over again. So it takes me about five or six cuts to make it all the way through this stuff. Now I'm using a very sharp brand new blade and I'm applying a little bit of pressure but I'm not going crazy with it. It's better to just make several cuts than it is to try and muscle through it all in one go. Now if you've got any overhangs from the grid paper and the foam board not lining up, you can really easily cut those off. You just wanna make sure that you're keeping the, the hobby knife, the X-Acto blade, really vertical so you're making a nice square cut with the, the edge of the foam board. Okay, now the next step might seem weird, but stick with me. I'm gonna take my black paint pen and color the outside squares, leaving a, a blank two by two left in the middle. Now I'm trying to be pretty neat with this paint pen, keep the, the lines looking nice and, and straight as I can. I guess I could have used a ruler for this part too, but I'm freehanding this whole thing. And this is basically how we're gonna be making the walls of the dungeon. You know, we're not just sticking grid paper to foam board and calling it a day. You need dungeon walls, so, you know, they're, they're basic, they're just solid black, but it's gonna look really good. Now, like I said, I don't wanna use this plastic ruler to actually cut, and since I'm covering up these grid guidelines I've been using to cut with the black paint pen, I'm just drawing in new ones really lightly with a pencil using this ruler. Okay, now I'm gonna carefully cut this four by four in half both ways, so we're, we're basically getting four corner pieces for this dungeon. Okay, hopefully this is starting to make sense. I, I hope so. Next up, it's time to make some non-corner walls, so I'm gonna get a, just a long strip that is four inches wide, four grid squares wide. I'm gonna fill in a strip of squares on the outside edges, so it makes like a long hallway piece, but then I'm gonna cut this thing down the middle, and then again, I'm gonna cut them into two by two squares. Okay, now that we have some corners and we've got some straight walls, we can make a room. So this is the fun part, getting to assemble the dungeon, right? Now, I guess, well, actually we're gonna need some blank two by two squares for the middle of these rooms as well. So let's go ahead and cut out some of those real quick. These are easy, no, no coloring with the paint pen needed. So we got our corner wall pieces, we've got our straight wall pieces, and then our blank like floor tile rooms, all two by two. So now we can start making our dungeon. It's like a, a perfect box. <laughs> <laughs> so here's where it gets cool, right? We can take out one of those straight wall pieces and put in a blank tile and we've made ourselves a door. Now that we have all of our basic pieces, it's time to just make a bunch more. Make as many as you possibly can. And the cool thing about once you have this grid paper stuck onto the foam board, it's really easy to just cut this stuff out, color in some areas when you need to, and just go to town making all these little two by two square dungeon tile pieces. You know, it feels really fun just to zone out and make something useful. I love making stuff in the computer, but sometimes just sitting down at the table and making stuff with my hands, it just, there's something really rewarding about it, having something tangible to hold immediately, even if it's just a bunch of simple two by two dungeon tiles, is really rewarding. And like I said at the beginning, maybe this is just a proof of concept set and there, there might be a cool way to decorate these tiles and make them look more visually interesting. Maybe that's something for a future video. Let me know in the comments if that's something I should do. But yeah, I could seriously sit here all day just making these little tiles. But JC and I are going to see the D&D movie, so I gotta, I gotta cut this off and keep it moving. Okay, now it's time to put a big dungeon together. This is the fun part. You made all your tiles, just start playing around, making different rooms and configuring things, learning about how all these pieces fit together. I think it only took me about an hour to make all of these tiles. Now that's with me like planning this stuff and filming a video. So I think once you actually get going, you could really crank out a bunch of these tiles. Now I actually took you through how to make three of these basic pieces, the, the corner, the straight wall, and then the, the empty, floor tile, but as I was putting together this dungeon, I realized I needed one more tile, and that is the sort of reverse corner, the, the anti-corner. <laughs> it's where you just fill in one of the squares instead of three of the squares in the, the two by two grid. Now these are the only four pieces you need to make a huge dungeon, but you might find it helpful to have a few two by one squares as well. So a straight filled in, two by one, two by one with 
with only one square filled in and then a blank two by one, just to make some of the connections a little bit easier to do. Really with these seven tiles, these seven simple, simple tiles that are so quick and easy to make, you can, as, as many tiles as you can make is as big of a dungeon as you can make. So yeah, now my plan is to make a ton more of these tiles. Maybe I'll do some drawing and decorating and you know making these walls and, and floor tiles look a little bit more interesting. Maybe make some door and treasure chest tiles. And actually the way to make these tiles really cool would be to somehow put a magnet in the back of the foam core and then you could like put them on like a dry erase board or, or something, some sort of magnetic board so they stay nice and clicked together. That would be the dream. Okay, let me know what you think of this method of building dungeons down in the comments. If you'd like to support the channel, I make monthly tabletop role-playing game adventures and guidebooks on my Patreon, making all kinds of cool stuff there. Or you can check out my online shop where I have a bunch of zines and stickers and pins and fun stuff for sale. Like I said, I love making tangible things and, and anybody that orders from my online shop, I'm the one that packs the envelope and sends it to you and sends thanks on the order slip and all that anyway thank you so so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one see ya